In this video, we will explore the differences between Aruba VSF and VSX and also show you how to configure both on Aruba CX switches. Both VSF and VSX are switch virtualization technologies used to simplify logical network topology and provide redundancy and high availability for your network. This is the setup we are aiming to build by the end of this video. A pair of Aruba 8360CX switches running VSX and providing routing services and link aggregation uplinks to a pair of Aruba 6200CX switches configured in a VSF stack. All of the switches are already running the latest firmware version and have been reset to factory default settings. To learn how to connect the console port on an Aruba CX switch and update the firmware, please refer to our Aruba 6100 CX Getting Started video. I'm now going to connect to each switch via a console cable, configure an appropriate host name and set a management IP address. I have already connected the out-of-band management interfaces to a dedicated management switch and have configured my laptop to be on the management network. On the right side of the screen, I'm running a continuous ping to the management IPs of all four switches so I can see when they come online. I'm going to console into the first 8360 switch. You can see that it's still in the factory default state. Let's get into the config mode, give it a meaningful host name and configure the management interface IP address. Save the config and after a few seconds we can see that the switch is responding to pings. Let's move our console to the second 8360 switch and repeat the process. And we do the same with the two 6200 switches. Now we are ready to start our configuration. Let's start by configuring the VSF stack on the two Aruba 6200 CX switches. Please note that VSF supports up to 8 or 10 members in a stack depending on the switch family in both ring and chain topologies. Ring topology is always recommended as it provides protection against a single switch or link failure. VSF simplifies your network topology as all switches in the VRF fabric appear as a single virtual device to the rest of the network. The elected master switch assumes control over management and control planes for all switches in the fabric, thus offering a single point of configuration. The standby member keeps the configuration synchronized with the master, as well as the state of all IP and MAC tables, thus ensuring a quick failover in case the master switch is lost. Let's start our configuration on switch 1. Let's get into VFS config mode. All VSF capable switches are stack member 1 by default. Let's specify our VSF interface. We also need to nominate the secondary member, otherwise all switches will join the stack as ordinary members by default. This will ensure switch 2 is elected as a secondary member upon joining. Save the config. Now let's log on to switch 2 to get into the VSF config mode and configure our VSF interfaces. We will renumber this switch to be VSF member 2. This will reboot the switch. While it's rebooting, let's connect ports 27 and 28 on both switches respectively. Give switch 2 a few minutes to join the VSF stack and then log into switch 1. You can see that switch 1 has both member 1 and member 2 interfaces listed in the config. We can see that VSF is now active, with switch 1 being the master and switch 2 the standby. We can see our interfaces 27 and 28 are configured as VSF links 1 and 2 respectively. 
and also how they're physically connected. To avoid a split brain situation, we can configure split stack protection. This feature requires all management interfaces to be connected to the same layer 2 network. In case the VSF links are disconnected, switch members can communicate to each other through the management interface, thus avoiding the split brain scenario. The stack segment containing the master will remain active, and the remaining segment will shut down all of its interfaces except for VSF links and wait for the link to be restored. Let's disconnect both VSF links and see what happens. Here we can see the VSF status on the master switch, as well as the status on the standby switch. Let's restore the VSF links. Now we're going to move on to the VSX configuration for the 8360 switches. Step 1 is to create the link aggregation interface to be used for the inter-switch link or ISL. It's best practice to use either dual 40, 50 or 100 gig interfaces for this link. It is technically possible to use 10 or 25 gig links but it's not recommended. Before you commence, make sure that both switches are running identical firmware versions. Let's configure link aggregation interface. Let's call it ISL link. Make it a trunk port and allow all VLANs. Now let's configure our physical interfaces. It's good practice to enable maximum MTU for jumbo frame support, especially in data center environments. Let's configure the second interface and save config, and then the corresponding interfaces on the second switch. Now connect the cables and check the lag and LACP status. Make sure both interfaces are in sync and collecting and distributing. Before we proceed with VSX setup, let's configure our Keep Alive interfaces. These play an important role in preventing split brain scenarios in case the ISL link goes down. It's good practice to configure the Keep Alive interfaces in a dedicated VRF. Connect the cables and test connectivity on the Keep Alive link. Before we move on, please note VSX System Mac will be set to the default hardware system Mac unless specifically configured. It's best practice to manually configure a virtual VSX System Mac by using locally administered unicast Mac address. The same applies to Active Gateway Virtual Mac. This makes it easier to replace the primary VSX switch in the future with no impact on the configuration settings. Here are the Aruba best practices on Mac assignments. Now be ready for VSX configuration. On the first switch, enter the VSX configuration context. 
Specify the system MAC that we have chosen. Set the first switch as primary and enable VSX Sync VSX Global under the VSX context. This will enable synchronization of VSX Global settings from the primary to the secondary switch. On the second switch, enter the VSX configuration context. Specify the ISL link and make it a secondary switch. Run show VSX status command to confirm the VSX is up and running on both switches. Note that we haven't specified the system MAC or VSX sync command on the secondary switch. These settings will be synchronized from the primary switch as we have enabled VSX context synchronization, which we can confirm by comparing the VSX configuration across both switches. Running show run VSX sync command will show you which configuration settings have been synchronized. We can see that the VSX cluster is active and in sync, but we haven't configured the Keep Alive feature to protect against the split brain. Let's go into VSX config mode on both switches and configure the Keep Alive peer settings. Now we can see that the Keep Alive feature has been configured and that it's active. By default, VSX Configuration Sync is enabled. It is also best practice to synchronize as many global settings as possible to avoid human error during the configuration. Here's a list of parameters that can be synchronized with best practice settings for a typical deployment highlighted in blue. Let's configure these on the primary switch. There's no need to apply the same command to the secondary switch since we have VSX Global Sync enabled, which will synchronize the VSX config settings across both switches. Let's check if this has indeed been synchronized. Now that our VSX cluster is up and running, let's create a few VLANs. Applying VSX Sync parameter to these VLANs will ensure they are created on the secondary switch and that the VLAN configs will be kept in sync across both switches automatically. Remember, config sync is enabled by default. Let's confirm this is the case by running show VLAN command on the second switch. Now let's configure downstream multi-chassis link aggregation, or VSX lag, as we are going to refer to it moving forward. Give it a name and make it a trunk port, allowing the VLANs we created earlier. Let's configure our physical interface. Again, it's good practice to enable jumbo frames. And let's replicate the config on switch 2. Lag interface settings will be automatically replicated from the primary switch. Now we need to configure VLANs 10 and 20 and the lag interface on the 6200 switch. Let's also configure port 1 on the first 6200, called 6200 1, as an access port on VLAN 10. This is where I'm going to connect my laptop. Let's connect the cables and go back to our 8360 switches. Show LACP interfaces multi chassis command is very useful in ensuring the lag is operating across all the links, as it will give you LACP status details across all switches participating in this particular link aggregation group. Now we are going to configure layer 3 interfaces for VLANs 10 and 20, 
so we can provide routing services to our downstream devices. Create the Switch Virtual Interface, or SVI, for VLAN 10. Enable Active Gateway Sync. Set the MTU to match the setting on our lag we created earlier. Set the interface IP address. Set the Gateway Virtual MAC address and Virtual IP address. These will be used to respond to any routing or switching requests. Repeat for VLAN 20. On the secondary switch, we just need to create the SVIs, set the MTU, and then set the local IP address. All other settings will be synchronized. Let's check by entering show run int vlan 10 command. I'll now connect my laptop to the 6200-1 switch and start a continuous ping to VLAN 10 gateway. Now I will remove the cable that was carrying the ping traffic between 6200-1 and 8360-1 switches. Now I will shut down switch 8360-1, that is, the primary switch in VSX config. Let's log on to the secondary 8360 to see what happened after we shut down the primary. We can see that the ISL link is down and peer is unreachable. We can also see that the keep alive link is also down, hence the secondary switch has taken over the primary role. Now let's bring the primary switch back up. We can see that the inter switch link is back up, the VSX is in sync and that the peer is reachable. And there you have it, we have shown you how to configure both VSF and VSX on Aruba CX switches. For more information on Aruba CX switches, visit the library at phoenixpro.club.